here with Caregiving 101. Yes. And we've got our own Scott Silkbetter with us today. And he's a jack of all trades and master of none. Master of none. I wasn't going to say that. But. That's okay. <laughs> so today our project is um, birdhouses. So we have this program, we, we offer it to kind of reach out to those who are at home and maybe need some more support, some ideas of things to do to get up and get busy and get off the couch. And so these are just little simple projects you can do in the home and you can make it as simple as possible or you can make it elaborate and, and work on it more than one setting. So today we have a birdhouse. Um, you can purchase these at any craft store, Walmart. You can get different sizes. We have the large size for Scott. <laughs> Not that I'm a big guy or anything. And the small size for me. <laughs> but um, if, if your loved one is, has a short attention span, this might be a, a simpler project. We also have the ones that you can put together. Um, I, I suggest hot glue as opposed to nails. But depending on if your uh, loved one is, well, hot glue, yes. If, depending on if your loved one is used to using uh, tools with hammers, and maybe that's a good project. But we're going simple today. Um, simple cuts out stress, and stress makes a successful project. So Scott has already picked out the colors he liked. And um, when you're choosing items to paint with, sometimes with memory care uh, residents or people, they might get confused and want to eat the paint. So I would not suggest putting paint in a plate, or you're watering to wash your paintbrushes, not to use a cup, because they're going to associate that with something to drink. Um, but, you know, don't be alarmed. Use uh, non-toxic paints and stuff, okay. so that way it's less alarming and less stressful. So, what would you like to start with today? I think I'm going to start with the front, and I think I'm going to paint it blue. Okay, and um, if your loved one maybe gets excited about getting paint on their hands, you can always have the option of using gloves, latex gloves. You can get them real cheap at um, most any store. And um, let them be creative. Don't, you know, if they want to paint it a wild color or paint over top of another color, um, just really good, but, you know, maybe try this. I and think my mom would always say, well, isn't that something? <laughs> isn't that something? So do you paint a lot, Scott? I do not. I do not. In fact, I've been told not to because I'm not good at it. But that's okay. I'm well, in this project, is okay because it's going to be your artwork. It. Anyone can do it. Um, you, if you have an old birdhouse outdoors, maybe it needs a little TLC. You can bring it in and let them sand. Most everybody Perfect. can still do, you know, back and forth. And um, that's just another little working project that, that they can work on. I always so put no something... Right no right or wrong. No way to right or wrong. I always put something on the table to protect the table, so that'll cut down stress. Plus, it's easy cleanup. You can roll it up and chunk it, you know, newspapers, anything like that. Are we really trying to get some birds to come live here? It depends on if you'd like to have it indoors or outdoors. Okay. So if you decide that you would like to have it indoors, maybe your loved one doesn't go outside. Um, you could always put it at the window for them to look at, but if if you want to make an indoor, we've got some props that you can hot glue on as you finish your project. We can talk about those items, and if you'd like to make it an indoor project, we'll, we'll show that. those. What do you do for folks um, that are colorblind? Do you label paint? You can label, or um, a lot of men are colorblind. Um, I found working with men, um, they can... Twist around so we can see you painting. They can't see him painting, so we've got to adjust that. So Neil, uh, um, Neil yawn at me from the from behind the camera. You can you can label. I'm you directing. Can, you can, <laughs> we need a director. <laughs> so label and then um, and then little reminders. Okay. Little reminders. You know, if you see them changing colors, you can say, "Now you've been using green. Are you wanting to change colors?" Just little helpful tips to kind of help them. Or if that's their dominant color they're using, only let them have that color. Did you ever, have you ever found someone who didn't want to participate because they couldn't tell what the colors were and you had to figure it out? I've not realized that that was their challenge. Okay. But um, it, it's very well possible because, you know, you have to be a detective and kind of read their body language and um, try to figure out what's going to work for that person. So maybe, you know, 
redirecting them and say, well, we're going to make this for a grandchild or we're going to make it for your spouse or, um, and then maybe hand them two colors in one hand. This is red. This is blue. What, what's your favorite? So it's just finding their hot button issue. What appeals right. to them? Right. And then, um, getting them to participate that way. Right. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to try to clean this brush. I don't have paper towels somewhere. Um, oh, I have them here. So I'm going to use. And, and you can have several different sizes if they, they, I would suggest the larger size brush if you're working on a larger project because that way they get it accomplished a little bit quicker and it's less frustrating. But there again, if they're able to do detailed, a smaller brush is the option to go. I've never painted upside down backwards before. Well, you're doing I'm, good because the camera can see what you're doing. <laughs> I'm digging this. I'm absolutely digging this. Okay, so if someone just sits in front of the TV or sits and sits and doesn't want to do anything, you got to put a detective hat on, right? Yes. And try to figure out what's going on. Right. Because you and knew that they did something their whole lives and they love doing it. Right. Okay. And sometimes it's just... Um, Getting them up and moving, maybe they're not able to walk the way they were able to, and so you got to encourage them. Well, can you help me do this? Can you help me go outside and, and pick this up? If you give them a reason to do it, they'll be more apt to get up and help. Not um, just, hey, do you want to go do this? Right, right. And, and they don't want to feel like they're doing busy work. They want to have a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, another option while you're painting, because I thought it might take you a while. I brought some other props. Calendars are a great tool that you can use, um, especially I know all seniors get 25 calendars every every year because I, I clean out my mom's house, loads of calendars. If you donate to anybody, they send you a calendar. So there's always great pictures. Now, we've laminated these because we use them a lot. But that's something if, uh, if your loved one doesn't get up and is mobile, you can pull out those pictures and talk about... Um, a lot of seniors love anything about history or presidents, the White House, you know, things, maybe places you've toured. Traveled. Traveled. Um, this little, this picture is a lemonade stand with two little girls. You know, that's a great topic starter. Jump start that topic Perfect. about children, grandchildren. Did you ever have a lemonade stand? I did not. Um, you missed out. I did, but we, uh, we sold cookies. Oh. It's all chocolate chip cookies. Cookies are better. You can tell by my Greek god figure <laughs> that I've enjoyed a few chocolate chip cookies in my day. One time, my husband and I were in Key West driving around, and we turned this little neighborhood, and there was these little girls out selling lemonade. It was a, a great little pit stop. Um, but, you know, they have flowers, animals. Animals are great subjects to talk about. And, you know, a lot of people may have had pets, you know, when they were little. So that, that's also a topic. So just for conversation. Yeah, just to add a little zazz to the afternoon and break so, up the monotony. So I'm not coloring within the lines. I'm You're not fine. Painting within You're the fine. Lines. Okay, fabulous. The birds do not care. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, is this one of those cases of you're your own worst critic? Yes. I'm my own worst critic. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm, I'm using all now, unless Darlene starts uh, saying, no. you're not putting that at my house. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's all empowering to me. Yeah, it, uh, she's all encouraging, I mean. That's good. Go and do it. All about building self-confidence. And I like the way you're using different colors and making it colorful. Um, now, are you colorblind? I am not colorblind. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because you're changing colors a lot. <laughs> I am just... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Creative. Artistically challenged? Uh, no, no, I mean, you know, you're fine. Because I don't know what goes with what, at, um, but that's okay. But that's okay. New but modern art, you, you no, see them all the time. They use a variety of colors. No one would ask me to come feng shui their house. Right? Is that a word? Feng shui? Yeah. But, uh, two. All right. Two words? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. So, we're getting close. You are. You're getting close. What am I, what, a front and the back. And if you see, like, maybe, like, Scott's not finished the back, but maybe he wants to leave it that way, but maybe he doesn't realize. So I could just give him a gentle reminder and say, Scott, the back is, is you know, plain. It doesn't have a color. Would you like to put a color, or do you want to leave it that way? I think because I'll leave it that way today. Sometimes it may just be they don't realize, but you don't want to make them, you want to build their self-esteem up and not tear them down. And, um, you don't want to point out that they've 
forgot it, possibly. Just redirect them and turn it into a positive. You know yellow and blue make green. They do. I was <laughs> waiting to see if we're going to get green out of this one. We are going to get some green. And and so he's actually mixing a few paint colors together and adding adding stri stripes, streak, streaks. Streaks. And uh, But it, it actually adds a little personality to it. Okay. So, do I have to let it dry before I add... Bef we Stop. now for what we're doing though. Okay. But if you're at home, I would let it dry. It would be a good time to make. Let's take a walk outdoors, or let's take stop and have a snack, or take a nap. Um, it, it's not that you have to finish it in one setting. All right. So if you did want to complete it, this project was done, and it's dry. You would want to get some clear glaze and coat it really well. Okay. So it will protect it outdoors, and that will last the color, keep the colors bright, you know, for for a long time. And you can also go back and respray it later if you see it starting to fade some to help preserve it. Right. Um, I would also write name and date gotcha. on the on gotcha. the bottom of it because you know that could be a keepsake for a grandchild one day, you know, that their grandparent painted it or something like that. So. Can I um, add? other pieces other than just yes. pieces like this? Can I write on things and add it? Like you a, can. Like you a can. popsicle like, stick kind of deal? You can take a popsicle stick, you can paint it or leave it the way it is and write, you know, if you wanted to write your name on there, Scott's Birdhouse. Um, Don't I've, touch it. It's Scott's. <laughs> I've actually got a marker. You know, just take a permanent marker of some sort and write. Fact, and if they're it. able to write their name, that would be even better. You know, let it, even if you had to get something larger for them to get their name. <laughs> It's mine. mine. It's mine. But that could be Do mine. Not touch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've never used a glue gun before. So <laughs> it, um, I well, just, so it's heated it's up. Fairly, it's fairly um, simple to use, but working with someone with memory care, you might want to be safe with it because it can burn them. You, so you do it. So you can either hold the object and let them squeeze the gun. Okay. Um, well, look at that. To see, and as long as they don't right touch out. the glue and they don't touch the silver part, good it's go. not going to burn them. How about that? And then you can mount it on however you like it. It's yours, so you do it. And see, they, he did not touch the hot glue, so he was saved. But, you know, just always help supervise it um, because it, it can burn them. So just be cautious about that. It's beautiful. So, and then just if you wanted to add some other little, you could take a bird and hot glue it. If you're going to use it indoors, I wouldn't do this outdoors because you want the bird to actually visit. But you could hot glue the bird up there or hot glue the bird on the house. Outstanding. Um, you can also take little stickers or take green leaves and put around it moss you can actually hot glue the moss to the okay. front or if you've got a favorite rock so you can add to it as much as you like or leave it leave it plain plain jane if, if you're a minimalist if you're a minimalist <laughs> say that fast three times not me <laughs> okay That's, um, okay that is um so what do you think i think it's awesome I think I could do this. Do you think we could sell his birdhouses? Yes. Yes, we could. <laughs> yes, we could. Okay. We got a thumbs up in the audience. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Well, uh, I appreciate you helping us out today. I wanted to let everyone know what we have for next week. So um, our next program, you can be getting the supplies. If you go to caregiving101.com, uh, they have a list of the projects that we have upcoming, and it also shows the supplies you need. But when you go to the beach, you're always uh, walking out with your loved one and you find shells or rocks. So this is a way to display and do a project, just a simple picture frame with rocks or shells that you found. So you can get any type of frame. Maybe you have some old frames in the house and we're going to kind of dress them up. Yeah. And Or you can go buy a frame at Dollar Tree. Or, or the craft stores. I always come home with pockets full of shells and sand. And what do you do and with shoes. them? I, I put them in a bucket and put them in. Put so them in. this is a way you can relive the trip and talk about memories. Absolutely. Um, or you can um, make it as a gift for someone. Okay. I know what um, I know what my kids are getting for graduation. I hope they're wait. not watching. <laughs> I hope there's, me, hope there's some money in that calorie. A, in that a picture, picture of me and their mother in a seashell frame. <laughs> They're going to love it. So, 
Well, thank uh, you for joining us this afternoon. I'm going to turn it over to Scott so he can close it out for us. I appreciate you guys joining us. And for more information, visit caregiving101.com. All those caregivers out there who are struggling on your own, you are not on your own. There's plenty of help, entertainment, how-tos available for you. And um, if you got any questions, give us a call or shoot us an email, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Have a great day.